Today is a beautiful spring day on March 30th. It's approximately 5.30 p.m. and I'm here at Brenda Salyer's studio located in Moorhead, Kentucky. We're going to conduct the interview video style today. There's Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Shalita. How are you today? Fine. Welcome to my studio, my playhouse. Oh, this looks wonderful. Thank you. Well, Brenda, I'm going to ask you several questions about you and your art, so just relax and enjoy the camera time. Um, first of all, where were you born and how did you end up here in Moorhead, Kentucky? I was born in Winchester, Kentucky. won't say the year, but uh, my family, my grandchildren, my daughter-in-law, and and stepson lived in Moorhead and uh, we followed our grandchildren by way of Florida. We did the snowbird thing for several years and I learned to oil paint while I was in Florida and uh, we moved to Moorhead and I love it. Love the yeah. area. Wonderful. Okay, so from my knowledge you are a painter and a photographer. Um, which of these mediums is your favorite and why? Really, neither one, and, and Shalita, I really don't consider myself either, you know, I, I, I am still learning, I learn something new every day, um, I tend to, one day I think, oh, I love photography more than I do painting, and then the next day it's different, so, uh, and like I say, I really don't consider myself a painter or do I consider myself a photographer? Um, I guess I'm a hybrid because I like both of them and I mix them. All right. Well, we're going to look at, at both um, examples today, but before we go further, I want you to tell um, your listeners and your audience about your studio, how you put this together, <laughs> and um, if you want to, we'll walk around and you can show okay. us. Well, nothing in my studio is really what it looks to be, actually. Uh, the countertop here is, uh, my neighbor was throwing away an old boat. This is the side of an old boat. Uh, these are some French doors uh, that we intended to put into some property we have, but here they are, and I use them. Um, my contact frame is our old French doors and I use this uh, to put my canvases onto mesonite board and contact this this is by pressure and uh, I don't <laughs> nothing I have my my light table was given to me by a friend uh, as I said, nothing you see is what it's supposed to be. I just use different things for my what I need. And uh, it works for me. I couldn't really afford. Uh, it's very expensive, photography and also painting. So um, this rack here was given to me. Um, I just just utilize everything and, and make it work for me. Okay. Um, let's look at your your series over here on the wall, uh -huh. which I find very fascinating myself. This this is a show I'm getting ready to take to the Rowan County Arts Center, and these are my streetscapes. I call it Small Town Big Dreams, and um, it the medium that I use here is again photography and oil. Um, you'll see later, I'll explain a little bit more about how I get to this point. Um, this show is ready to go out, will be delivered. There's 25 pieces going to the Rowan County Arts Center. Hope everyone can make my reception April the 12th, 5 to 7 there. Um, and the frames that I try to keep everything in my work through try to support the local artist also. The frames are uh, from a local lumber mill, White's Lumber Mill, and um, uh, Stephen Hayes makes the, the frame. He actually does um, uh, routers and, and everything. It's just a board when he gets it. And, um, 
Okay. Um, while we are on the subject of photography, I was wondering, um, sometimes I feel as if other artists do not see photography as art. Do you ever sense that yourself? And it's, and if so, what do you think about that? You know, yes, sometimes I, I get that, that feeling. Um, but you can paint such a great picture with a camera. And I didn't realize until my husband gave me a camera. <laughs> Uh, back in 2003 and I'm a slow oil painter but when he gave me that camera and I could immediately get the gratification of a shot I was sold and that's where really I started my new media uh, process is, is just I'm not a photographer I'll go back to what I said before I'm not a photographer, but with photography and with oils combined, I can get my end result. And um, sometimes you hear, at some of my shows, someone will look at that and they'll say, oh, that's just a picture, I can do that. But it's not just a picture, it's a creation. It's, it's something that someone saw and, and, and they worked it and, 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 and created it. It's a creation. Okay, that sounds like a very good answer. And being a photographer myself, I, you know, I would answer it in a similar way. Um, we're going to go and see where Brenda paints. So we're going to stop it here and when we turn the camera back on, we're going to be in her painting part of her studio. We're back with Brenda and we're upstairs in her painting studio. She's going to tell us a little bit about this area. Well, this is actually my play area, Shalita. Uh, and here again, nothing is like it. It's supposed to be. Nothing's what it uh, seems. But uh, as you see, I have a cane. Um, I use this to steady my hand when I'm painting. I have this is. Uh, roughed in acrylic right now, and I, I do acrylic first, get my composition, then I go back in with the oils. But, um, and for a lot of artists have a problem with what to do with their paper towels, put it on just a bungee cord and hang it on your legs. Um, I use, <laughs> to mix my colors, I'm going back to my graphics, uh, I use the Pantone Paint, uh, painters uh, or printers book for my colors. It gives me my formula so I don't really have to guess too much about my colors that I'm mixing. Um, to keep the points on uh, your brushes instead of buying that, <laughs> uh, I don't even know what it's called, but I use clothespins and um, paper to keep the points on my brushes. Uh, as you see, I have um, uh, Northern Light. Wayne put me the windows in to paint by the Northern Light. And uh, one day I was painting, in fact, I was painting the Winchester Melody painting over there, standing here, and I looked over, and Grace was there, and there was feathers everywhere. And I said, oh, Grace, you killed a bird. And she looked at me like, what bird? So I had to do a painting of Grace and I call it What Bird and it's behind you Shalita on the wall over there. That's my painting of Grace and I, as I say I call it What Bird. Great. Well, um, this brings me to my next question which is um, how would you say that living in the Appalachian region affects you as an artist? That's really a hard question. I really, art has been in my heart all my life and where it came from or uh, how, that, that's really, really hard. Being Growing up on a farm, and uh, Dad would take, and my mother worked in the farm, on the, in the fields too, and they would take the children, us, to the, the fields with them. 
And as a child, at the end of the tobacco row or the corn uh, field, I would smooth the dirt out. That would be my canvas. And I would use sticks and feathers and I would paint. Everybody else would be out working but me. I would be, be painting. And I don't know, maybe just the simple times. And um, I know I would draw and paint a lot on the back of wallpaper. And my mother died. In fact, I have it hanging on the wall over here. My mother died about five years ago. And we were going through her things. And I found this piece rolled up in her back, stuck back in her closet. So obviously she cared something about my work. And she did encourage me. And so did my dad and my family, sisters and brothers. But this is a, a drawing that I did my early teens and it is on the back of wallpaper uh, my I used a number two pencil for the lights and my darks was from an old black shoe polish when I was growing up shoe polish came in a glass jar glass bottle with galls on the end of a wire and the darks in that is black shoe polish so you know just I guess being in the Appalachia, you learn to adopt and you learn to use what you have. Um, as I said, my studio method here is what it seems I use uh, and uh, what I, I, I have. Okay. And I have friends too that give me things and, and uh, sometimes they'll give me uh, 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 something round that will end up as a table. Uh, maybe that goes back to my Appalachian upbringing, I don't know, just, just making do. Okay, Brenda, um, my next question is, would you consider yourself a trained artist? You know, somebody who has a college education or an untrained one much like a folk artist and why? Definitely untrained, self-taught, Shalita. Um, as I mentioned, when we did the snowbird thing in Florida, uh, I did t uh, for a few years take classes uh, at the uh, Mount Dora Center for the Arts in Florida. Paula Polinski was my instructor, and I learned to paint the old master style way, and that's his with other workshops, I've grabbed workshops every time uh, I could uh, and paint as much as I could, paint all the time. But uh, I had to make a living. As I mentioned before, art was in my heart. But uh, I had to work and make a living and uh, worked at, uh, was printing publications uh, manager at production manager at UK Printing Services and was graphic artist um, and with my graphics background and then Wayne, my husband, giving me the camera and my oil painting experience, it just seemed, why not put them together? I know a lot of artists uh, use a projection screen and a lot of artists trace their work uh, onto their their canvas and with me I, I go I guess it's new media I go a step beyond that and use the um, photograph several photographs that I put together a lot of the times and do my composition in Photoshop and um, what I can't get from that, I go back in with oils and add, most of the time, add a dramatic sky and uh, details that, that I couldn't get with the, the camera. And uh, just combining it and uh, uh, getting my end result that way. Um, and it, it's so new, I uh, hesitated to sell my originals because I wasn't sure about the integrity of the, the media because it's so new. 
but uh, I met an artist at Artist Alley, and he told me that his mother had done that technique years ago when they first started going from uh, black and white photographs to color. His mother would do that technique. She would actually, she worked for a photographer that would go back in and add color. And he said, and that was 50 years ago. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, that's true. I remember that because my son's first um, a color portrait was, or color photograph was painted over black and white. And so it, from that point on, then I thought, okay, I feel better about selling my originals. So I do, um, I have CC Trail Vineyards uh, here in Moorhead that saw my work hanging at one of the local restaurants and called me one day and asked if I would be interested in putting my work on his labels. And at, I thought it was my brother. I had two brothers that constantly played jokes on me and I thought it was my brother and I said yeah right and uh, Jim Ross thought he kept talking and he, and he said no I'm really serious I want your work on my labels on my wine bottle labels we're going to do a series and uh, of eastern Kentucky counties and uh, we'll do about 30 and uh, so now my artwork Small Town Big Dreams are on a wine label, and I'm, I'm very pleased and honored, actually, uh, that, because he, he is a trained artist and has a degree, that he saw what I was going for, and uh, I was very honored, and I said, well, certainly I will do that. So we've started, and I think we probably have about eight labels uh, on the on the wine bottles now, and my West Liberty one has a special place in my heart. Um, I uh, I had a tentative schedule for to get the 120 counties, and West Liberty wasn't on my schedule for for I think maybe six or eight months down the road. But I got up one Sunday morning, and I just I, I something was just pulling at me to get on the road and and um, uh, I guess the creative juices were flowing. I just wanted to go and, and, and shoot something with my camera and so I did. I, I grabbed my Mercy Me CD and my little snack box and my water and my camera and I hit the road and ended up in West Liberty. And it was early in the morning, and I love the early mornings and early evenings. It's just something special about the beginning of the day and the closing of the day. And I walked up and down the street, and I, I, it was quiet, and I just seemed to have the whole little town by myself. And I uh, photographed one end and got the courthouse and the little building at the, on the left, and then I went on down to the end, and the little church there, it was just, I just couldn't, I just stood and looked at it, and then I started shooting, and, and I walked around to the left side of the church and, and looked up, and still feeling guilty because I'd missed church that morning, and about the time I looked up, I looked up at the steeple and, and the cross, and a sunbeam hit that cross. And it was like a star in this cross, and the sun then came and hit my face, and I thought, oh gosh. It was like the Lord said, Brenda, it's okay, I needed you here today. And that was, it was just a special little town for me. And then when the tornado destroyed it, March the 2nd, 2012, um, Langley Franklin called me and asked me, if I would consider donating that image to West Liberty to put on t-shirts to uh, the proceeds to go to the victims of the tornado and I said definitely for sure and I uh, was very honored that they even asked and uh, 
was thrilled. So I did that, and there there are t-shirts available if anyone wants a t-shirt to help West Liberty. <laughs> and um, but um, I've got off the question, Shalita. What was the question? <laughs> I think, well, I think your story that you just told was wonderful. Um, so it's 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 okay. Um, the next question I had for you was, you know, since you're talking about that series, it's called Small Towns, Big Dreams. Is uh -huh. that correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, where did that idea come from? Well, I, as I said, I was already doing Small Towns of Kentucky, and there again, it goes back to my photography and, and the love of architecture. And I... Uh, when we first moved back from Florida, and I, my husband gave me the camera, and I did my first piece of my hometown, Winchester, Kentucky, and took it to Pioneer Festival in Winchester and sold it along with, I did sell the original that time, um, and everyone coming into my booth said, well, when are you going to do my town? When are you going to do my town? And I thought... I love this so much. Why can't I? I want to travel? We're retired. So that's how I got started on my small towns. And then, as I mentioned, Jim Ross saw my work and wanted to do a series with his labels. And we had to come up with a, a, a name. And we both settled on small towns, big dreams, because so many of us from Kentucky, seems like especially Eastern Kentucky, have big dreams. And so many have achieved, you know, their dreams. I mean, we have, I could go on and on, Loretta Lynn and, and the Judds. And, you know, I didn't realize Tom Cruise was from Kentucky. And, and on and on and on of, of so many that have come from Kentucky and have. George Clooney and, and Rosemary and, and have achieved their dreams. And uh, my dreams aren't nearly as big as theirs. All I want to do is just just paint and create, but I'm still achieving my dreams. And that's where that came from. And, and your goal is to do every county in One Kentucky? One streetscape of every county in Kentucky. And Shalita, I had to pick the the second largest county state <laughs> to do that. But, you know, I hope to, to I plan on, that's my long-term goal, is long-term goal is to, to finish that. I may be 104, but, you know, that'll keep me going anyway. Well, you seem very youthful. I think you're going to make it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> We're going to, Brenda is going to show us another part of where she works, which is actually her print shop. So in a little bit, we're going to go there. Okay, so we're back with Brenda, and I wanted her to show you guys the image from West Liberty that she told the story about. And Brenda, I wanted to ask you, is there a certain way that you photograph these towns, um, a technique or a certain way you stand or a certain time of day? Uh, Shalita, I like early morning and early evening. I, it seems like... Uh, for one thing, there's not as many cars to have to take out. Uh, when I do my, my work, I call it romancing the cities. I take out all the cars, all the people, all the merchant signs, the stoplights, and just leave the architecture. Um, with, with West Liberty, if you stand here, you, you won't see this view because I, I pull the church in and um, some of the buildings uh, I've pulled in a little bit to give, a, in my point of view, a better composition. Um, and I also, I know a lot of people don't like a dramatic sky, but I do. I love the sky and, and I feel like you know, if the Lord gives me the sky and I, I do the art, I work on the architecture, so we're kind of in a partner there, um, a partnership. Uh, but this is, this, I was standing down here when I looked up, and, and it seemed like the, 
the sun hit hit the the cross and it, it looked like a star to me and then it hit my face and it was just just a special moment for me and those are that's what I try to convey and get over onto the canvases to try and, and get that feeling or that wow out there for for the public. And that's what I love about my work. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, we're going to go and see um, Brenda's print lab where she prints off work just as the one that she's holding. We're in Brenda's print studio now and um, I'm going to pan around here and show you what she has in her print studio. And then Brenda is going to actually show us um, how she does that painterly technique to her photographs, which was my next question. I wanted to know how you, how do you make those towns look so beautiful and romanticized? Shalita, I use lots of times several photographs, and I mentioned before I'm not a photographer really or an artist. I guess I put the two together, and, and it's new media or it's it's a hybrid. I don't know what else to, to call it, but um, this is Richmond, and this is one, two, three photographs put together, and I've already romanced it some. I've already taken out all the cars, and I'm beginning to, and you can see where I cut and pasted, um, and I'm beginning to take out the, the stoplights, and um, this is the end piece. Once I've finished, uh, I've, gone, I've gone back in and I've, I've painted in the sky, painted in some highlights with oils, and I like using transparent oils sometimes, uh, and some of the road, and then I actually will take that piece after it's dried. I, I, before I, I uh, paint it, though, I have to seal it. I do about four coats of clear acrylic sealer before I paint over that. And after that's dried for several days, then I will scan it. I have a wide format scanner that I will scan that back into the computer, and that's my master file. That is uh, what I will print from. Um, I uh, have three, I have two wide format printers. Uh, I dream, my dream is to get another printer that I can print both photo black and matte black without having to drain the, the, the ink out and they would be interchangeable. That's my next goal. But uh, I have uh, the Epson. I like the Epson. I know Hiller Packard and Canon both have some really good wide format printers, but I like the Epson because uh, of the uh, water resistance uh, uh, factor with them. Um, this, this printer is um, will go 24 inches wide. It's Epson also by 59. I now have, um, I have 10 prints up right now. Uh, uh, I uh, normally, <laughs> With me, I, I cut my rolls to size because I found that uh, the printer would advance six or eight inches in between queuing over a job. So I, I want to keep that six or eight inches. So I actually cut all of my paper instead of running it on the roll and print as a sheet. Um, this printer, uh, I got through, uh, my brother told me a friend of his was selling a printer, so I've not paid full price for anything that I have in my studio or my print room at all. This was used. I got my 2200 wide format on eBay. Uh, a friend of mine was upgrading with the Mac Pro and I got it. The, the Mac Pro for like a couple of hundred dollars. Um, my wide format scanner I got again from another photographer that was going to upgrade for like a fifty dollars. So nothing in my studio. I couldn't afford it. I mean, 
you're talking twenty, thirty thousand dollars probably to get a, a shop up. And eventually, I hope to have new upgraded equipment. But right now, this is working for me, and I'm getting good quality prints uh, on canvas and on fine art paper. And um, it that you don't have to start at the top. You can just start slowly and and buy the equipment um, and and uh, and have um, nice quality artwork. Uh, I do have artists. I have a few artists that I do prints for, but I not very many because I stay so busy with my own work that. Um, uh, I keep that limited. Okay, Brenda, um, can you tell us who was your inspiration? Is there is there a particular person that that is an inspiration to you, and why? Shalita, I, you know there are so 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 many great artists, uh, even locally. I mean, you know, we had Joe Sarter, we had. Karen Glades, he uh, does pastel. Sandy Gullet that does color pencil. Mildred Stan Lee that does watercolor. And and you, you're a fabulous photographer. Uh, you know, sculptures, just many, many. But Christine Barker was my friend and mentor. We did shows together. We traveled together. Uh, we did painting classes together, we laughed together, we cried together, we prayed together, and I still have her voice on my answering machine right now. I can't erase it. Uh, when she first went to the doctor and she came home and it wasn't good, and but she she still held held the light and she, and 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 the love. She loved people and she loved her her art, and um, she she just lifted me up. And I can just walk into her studio and just oh, I want to be here. That would be my thought. I would think I want to do this. I want to be able to capture the feeling, and she did. She captured the feeling, and uh, uh, I, I would have to say Christine Barker was my, my top mentor, but you know, again, there's so, so many wonderful, fabulous artists. Um, for me, with, with my, my my work that I'm doing now, oil painting is is actually my favorite. I love setting up a still life and and painting from oils. But uh, I want with the small towns big dream series. I want to get that done and behind me, and and then find something new to to spark my interest to give me the drive. Uh, you know and. Um, I think that that's what life is. Life's a journey, and and with the, I'm in the season of my life that that it's kind of really too late for me to learn. But but I, I still strive, and and I learn every day um, something new, and uh, love doing watching videos. I've uh, just. My children got me a series of Scott Kelby's digital photography, and I said in the evening as Wayne's watching the History Channel, I will have my earplugs in and watching Scott Kelby showing me how to actually use a camera, <laughs> and or I will. I have Richard Smith. I love him. There's another great artist. I think to me, uh, oil painter is one that actually takes a brush to canvas, does their sketching in a brush, brush to canvas. I think that is actually what an oil painter is. That's, and I don't consider myself an oil painter. I paint, and uh, but I, I do a different, different style. But um, 
Yeah, I would just have to say my, my mentor was Christine Barker. Yeah, and, and of course, the, then Karen Glancy pops into my mind because she is a she she travels with me. She's what she's my spotter. When I I go shoot my uh, streetscapes, I stand in the middle of the road so I can see the cars coming towards me, but I can't see my back. So Karen goes with me and stands along the side of the street, and she'll haul her car, and I'll move to the side. So we, we had that worked out pretty good, and she's a great artist and a great inspiration, and, and you know, so many come to mind. Uh, but Christine Barker was, was my mentor. Okay, Brenda, um, tell us a little bit about how you market your work, because I've heard from several people that you are excellent at marketing, so I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that would like to know, you know, if you have any secrets or tips. Shalita, really not. I, my preference is personal contact. I do about one show a month and usually I don't like doing a one day show um, three or four days shows I have I've only scheduled though actually maybe 12 this year um, but as as far I, I, I talk a lot about my work I uh, every place I go I have a small mini print of my artwork with my QR code on the back um, uh, I do internet marketing sort of I uh, as I said I prefer the personal contact I Oh, a few months ago, discovered uh, Blog Talk Radio, Leslie Seda, and uh, from out uh, Pasadena, California, and I use her um, format or uh, structure to do internet marketing. I I blog once a week, uh, write um, email newsletters once a week, and I. Um, have a comment section on my website, do Facebook. Uh, I'm not by no means uh, good on, on internet marketing, I don't think, because I totally messed up my uh, personal page. I tried to merge my fan page with my personal uh, profile page and totally lost 118 likes for my uh, Facebook fan page and uh, now it's out there and I can't do anything with it. I've got a totally, it's a rogue page. Uh, but I love getting comments. I get a lot of comments uh, on my website and um, I do uh, LinkedIn and Pinterest and uh, I, I get out there just, just Never in a million years did I ever think I would sell any artwork, but by just putting it out there in a show, um, just just get it out there and 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 it will sell. And uh, uh, I I don't do anything special. And and business cards I I, I don't do. I, as I said, I do the little mini print with my QR uh, code on the back. If if you're familiar with a QR code... Um, actually, I'm not. Can you explain what, what that is? A QR code is like... Um, you have to have an iPhone, I believe, to use it. And you just scan that QR code uh, into your iPhone and it, your website pops up. And it will... Uh, anything, for instance, like at... at the shows that I do, I will have a QR code there. You won't see a, a brochures or anything like that. Uh, I do have, again, the many, many uh, prints, and I do also have postcards. 
but they can scan that QR code on the back of the mini prints and it will immediately bring my website up about me anything they want to know and any of my artwork it's all right there in front of them and um, that that's that's a biggie for me uh, and as I said I do the blog talk radio I listen to it's called Artist Helping Artist with Leslie Sada out of Pasadena California and Dreama Toll Perry from Paris Kentucky used to be with uh, Leslie but she's taken time off for a while and uh, if you listen to that it gives you so many tips on marketing and um, art they have fabulous artist. I think uh, Kathy Kusick was on there not too long ago and uh, she tells how she's, she got started and um, how she markets through eBay and Etsy and um, it, it is, I just highly recommend that for any artist, photographer, or bit, really any business person because uh, the, the steps that Leslie uh, gives you to follow could uh, pertain to any business. Okay, Brenda, so um, in case our listeners want to find you online and view some more of your work or read about you, can you tell us how, how we can find you? Uh, Shalita, I do. I, I have a website. It's not a very pretty website right now, but I'm getting there, and I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest. Uh, this is my fan business page, Brenda Salyer's Art, and I would love it if you would go on there and like my page. As I mentioned before, I've got a road page up there somewhere with 118 likes on it, and for some reason, I put the little art gallery up there intending to build an art gallery, and it's got 600 and something likes. But I, I want the likes on my fan page, on my art page. Um, you can go on my art page. Okay, let me close this out. And click on Print Shop. And it will bring my artwork up. And there you can buy my artwork on either paper or canvas. Framed. You can look and see different frames, um, uh, and it will be printed and shipped right to you. And it's uh, www.facebook.com uh, forward slash Brenda Salyer's Art. Then I also have a, a web page is www.brendasalyers.com. There again you can buy, um, let me go into my print shop. This is my web, web page and there I'm printing Winchester Melody and this is the painting I was printing when Grace, uh, I thought, ate the bird and I painted what bird from that. But, this is where you can go into my print shop online and uh, you can just click on on the artwork and it will you can go in there and make choices of different mats different frames different papers canvas and it will be shipped with you to you usually within a week now I don't do uh, my own prints for online I do have a company out of the uh, South Carolina that does my prints. I couldn't keep up with my prints selling online and my uh, prints at home. So the prints that I do uh, in my print shop I sell at my art shows and those uh, it would be to your advantage to come to some of my shows because uh, you're getting different sizes. The sizes that I print you can't get online and also you're getting hands-on because I, uh, you get it from, from the mind to the hands putting it together, even framing. I do my own frames. So when you buy a piece of artwork from my shows, uh, that, um, and, and my schedule is on my webpage, um, 
everything from that piece of artwork is all from my hands and my mind. So that's a little extra incentive to come out and see me, and I'd love to see you too. Um, but that's the the prices uh, are a little bit more online too than what I sell my prints for. All right. Well, Brenda, I think this concludes our interview, and thank you so much for having me over today. I know that everybody's going to really enjoy hearing about your art and some tips and tricks and insight. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Shalita.